Whether it's a very inconvenient store clerk, a violent hero turned towards pacifism, or just a really crappy caped crusader, these actors felt like they needed to apologize for their roles in some badly flopped films. Batman and Robin is often considered to be the Caped Crusader's worst two hours. The puns, the camp, and the bat nipples are cultural touchstones for all the wrong reasons. The Iceman cometh. Few bore the brunt of this more than George Clooney, who has spent years apologizing for his part in the fiasco. During the Tomorrowland panel at 2014's New York Comic Con, some of the panelists teased Clooney about Batman. Clooney joked that his portrayal got him disinvited to Comic-Con and how he almost apologized to Adam West backstage that day. He added that he was sorry about the rubber nipples. Several months later, the Tomorrowland cast was interviewed on The Graham Norton Show. Norton acknowledged Clooney's apology. I always apologize for that. <laughs> I thought at the time this was going to be a very good career move. Um, it wasn't. <laughs> Mahershala Ali's performance as Don Shirley in Green Book won him critical acclaim and plenty of awards. But despite that, the movie is often criticized as a white savior narrative. The Shirley family, who were never consulted about the depiction, expressed issues with the movie, which led to a personal apology from Ali. Shirley's nephew Edwin said watching Green Book was rather jarring and took exception to how his uncle was portrayed. Don Shirley is shown as estranged from the black community and out of contact with his family. But Edwin noted that Shirley marched in Selma with Martin Luther King Jr. and was close friends with many other black musicians. I'm blacker than you are. Excuse me? You don't know shit about your own people. Shirley was also in contact with his family. Edwin called Shirley's depiction in Green Book very hurtful and 100% wrong. Shirley's brother Maurice went further, calling Green Book a symphony of lies. In response, Ali called both Maurice and Edwin Shirley. He later told Shadow and Act, I was not aware that there were close relatives with whom I could have consulted. Cameron Crowe's 2015 rom-com Aloha bombed at the box office and would have been forgotten entirely if not for the disastrous casting of Emma Stone as an Asian woman. This led to both Crowe apologizing for the casting and Stone apologizing for taking the whitewashed role in question. Stone plays Alison Ng, an Air Force captain who is one quarter native Hawaiian and one quarter Chinese. The casting felt suspect in a world in which multiracial actors have difficulty finding work, and Hollywood already has an ugly history of whitewashing Asian roles. Crow offered an apology via his blog, and Stone later expressed regret for taking the role, stating that she'd come to learn about the history of whitewashing in Hollywood a little too late. Stone's second and more direct apology was considerably more succinct. During the opening monologue of the 2019 Golden Globe Awards, host Sandra Oh joked that Crazy Rich Asians was, quote, the first studio film with an Asian American lead since Ghost in the Shell and Aloha. Stone yelled, I'm sorry, from the audience. Jason Alexander is best known as George Costanza, but that role shows off only a sliver of his true talent. Alexander can sing, dance, and boasts a tremendous career upon the stage, as well as the screen. But even he couldn't get past the problems caused by a moose and squirrel. 2000's The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle has a star-studded cast, high-profile cameos, and a budget of $76 million. None of this mattered. Rocky and Bullwinkle earned middling reviews and only $35 million worldwide, cementing it as a box office bomb. Alexander, who portrays the fiendish Boris Badenov alongside Rene Russo's Natasha Fortal, keenly felt the sting of this film's failure. But during an appearance on The Howard Stern Show, Alexander admitted that he only did the role for the money and apologized for his part in it. FIFA, the international governing body of association football, or soccer depending on where you're from, are as well known for the sport as they are for corruption. One of their many attempts to smooth this over was the 2015 film United Passions. The movie goes beyond being a simple puff piece, with FIFA putting up 90% of the budget. No one could have predicted how terrible the film's timing would be, however. Just before release, 14 FIFA officials were arrested on corruption charges. Tim Roth plays Sepp Blatter, then president of FIFA. Just just days before the movie's opening, the real Blatter resigned from his position and had been banned from FIFA operations for six years. In the movie, however, he's a peerless leader, distinguished by his impeccable ethics. Shortly before the movie was released, Roth was interviewed by German newspaper Die Welt. He expressed remorse over his part in it, admitting that he had not even watched the finished product. I didn't question the director. I didn't question the script. This is a role that will have my father turning in his grave. 
Star Trek V The Final Frontier is often considered to be one of the worst Star Trek movies, and as both the director and the star, William Shatner takes the brunt of the blame. In 2016, Shatner finally apologized. Kind of. He noted that The Final Frontier was a multi-million dollar movie, and that budgeting went sideways, telling Entertainment Weekly, when it came to shooting the ending, needing a good villain and lots of computer graphics, I had run out of money. Sorry about that. Shatner also added that the ending wasn't what he planned. I had to use footage that I had already shot, and spit on it a lot. I wanted to give the audience earth-breaking granite monsters spewing rocks and fire. Instead, I had a few pebbles in my hand that I threw at the camera. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is a contentious movie. Mutt Williams, Indy's sidekick and son, is one major factor in fans' mixed feelings. As it turns out, Shia LaBeouf has some misgivings of his own. While promoting 2010's Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps at Cannes, LaBeouf went off on Crystal Skull during a press event. You get some monkey swinging and things like that, and you can blame it on the writer, and you can blame it on Steven Spielberg. But the actor's job is to make it come alive and make it work. And I couldn't do it. So that's my fault. Simple. LaBeouf said that he and Harrison Ford talked it over and were both unsatisfied. Though he holds Spielberg in the highest regard, he stated that the director still bears some of the blame. He's done so much great work that there's no need for him to feel vulnerable about one film. But when you drop the ball, you drop the ball. Ford later called LaBeouf an idiot for lambasting the film. When it comes to a controversial film, there are no winners. Hank Azaria voiced Apu on The Simpsons from 1990 to 2020, but the role has been subject to criticism for years, finally coming to a head in the 2017 documentary The Problem with Apu. I hate Apu. I hate Apu. And, and because of that, I dislike The Simpsons. The whole series. Yeah. After spending a fair amount of time thinking about it, Azaria has stated that he regrets the part, and decided to stop voicing the Quickie Mart proprietor. Azaria first addressed the controversy on a 2018 episode of The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. And the idea that it's, you know, brought pain and suffering in any way, uh, that it was used to marginalize people, it's, just, it's upsetting, gen genuinely. He indicated that he was open to a casting change and a character readjustment. In early 2020, Azaria stopped voicing the role entirely. At the time, Matt Groening stated that Apu will remain part of the show, though in what form, no one yet knows. I've learned that life is one crushing defeat after another until you just wish Flanders was dead. Carol Burnett is a comedy icon. But that doesn't mean she's never had an off day. One of those days was in Billy Wilder's 1974 movie, The Front Page. She knew during filming that her performance was dreadful, which was also an opinion shared by many reviewers. This eventually led her to give a personal apology to a captive audience. Some time after making the movie, Burnett and her husband were on a flight when fans recognized her. The flight attendant then announced that the in-flight movie was The Front Page, which caused Burnett to sink into her seat. As the credits rolled, a silence gripped the plane. So Burnett decided to face the music. She went up to the flight attendant and asked to use the speaker. Burnett introduced herself and said, I would like to apologize to each and every one of you for my performance in that film. And they went, yeah! Jim Carrey plays Colonel Stars and Stripes, a reformed mafioso in Kick-Ass 2. A month after Carrie finished filming, the Sandy Hook school shooting happened. Six months later, and a couple of months before the release of the movie, Carrie tweeted, I did kick ass a month before Sandy Hook, and now in all good conscience, I cannot support that level of violence. My apologies to others involved with the film. I am not ashamed of it, but recent events have caused a change in my heart. Kick ass creator Mark Miller responded via his blog, saying, As you may know, Jim is a passionate advocate of gun control and I respect both his politics and his opinion. But I'm baffled by this sudden announcement, as nothing seen in this picture wasn't in the screenplay 18 months ago. He also noted that Colonel Stars and Stripes deliberately tried to avoid using guns, and that Carrie did the movie a favor by getting it in the news. A year later, Miller and Kick-Ass co-creator John Romita Jr. changed their tune, expressing disappointment that Kerry would abandon the people who worked on the project. They also said he was not a smart enough guy to square playing an anti-gun character with his real-life support of gun control. Woody Allen was first accused of sexually abusing his adopted daughter Dylan Farrow in 1992. In 2014 and 2017, Farrow repeated the allegations publicly. In response, women who had once worked with Allen publicly apologized for doing so. Two days later, after sidestepping the question at the 2018 Golden Globes, Greta Gerwig clarified her position in no uncertain terms during a New York Times discussion. 
If I had known then what I know now, I would not have acted in the film. I have not worked for him again, and I will not work for him again. Dylan Farrow's two different pieces made me realize that I had increased another woman's pain, and I was heartbroken by that realization. Rebecca Hall, who had won acclaim for her role in Alan's Vicky Christina Barcelona, was a mid-production on a rainy day in New York when Farrow's 2017 statement dropped. After filming wrapped, she posted on Instagram, I see not only how complicated this matter is, but that my actions have made another woman feel silenced and dismissed. That is not something that sits easily with me in the current or indeed any moment, and I am profoundly sorry. She also pledged to donate a salary from the movie to the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund. Mira Sorvino starred in Alan's Mighty Aphrodite in 1995, which netted her an Oscar and a Golden Globe. Her connection to both Farrow and the Me Too movement is personal. Ronan Farrow named her as one of Harvey Weinstein's victims in his explosive 2017 New Yorker article. Sorvino wrote an open letter in January of 2018 to Dylan Farrow, in which she apologized and pledged never to work with Alan again. 